chapter two, sinners. What a way to end chapter one. My God. They were all ready to give their lives too. Yeah, we're all standing on shoulders of giants right now. Commander. <laughs> Commander Armin. Ugh. It was his destiny, though. You got lucky. At least it doesn't look like that awful Rob Rice Titan. I feel like they're underestimating the size of him. Isn't he like a hundred times the size of a colossal titan? At least. Well, we've established a psychic link, but it seems to be one way. I was under the impression that he, he got the power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this time. On the ninth try. Yeah, it was a sad day. It's a troubling incident. You gotta do the good that you can. Yeah, I mean, that feels resoundingly right to me. There's this idea of redemption, and I think they're all redeemable, but I don't think redemption necessarily means forgiving or this kind of like wiping the slate clean. That doesn't happen. But I think you, you make the space for time and the change that comes along with that. You know, the people sitting in this in this plane, boat, whatever it is right now, are the same people in a sense, but they're also not. The people that did the atrocious things they're guilty of, feel responsible for, have learned. And it's more important to me who they are now, what they're doing now, than anything they've done in the past. Which does not absolve them for it. It just puts the focus on what I feel is the most important, which is what they can do with the power they have right now. This is something they have in common with Eren too, yeah. Eren no kangaite rukoto ga skoshi wakaru kiga suru. Eren wa ore tachi ni tomete hoshi in janai no ka. I feel like he's probably right. Eren's been begging for an out. Subete no kyojin to LDRG ni eikyo o atae rukoto ga dekir. Nano ni bokura wa kawari naku kyojin no chikara o tsukaeru mama da. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Right. Giving them what he feels he doesn't have. But Eren also feels that this whole thing is predestined. Yeah, he's a human being. <laughs> what? And now they're all, they're all connected. Can he hear all their thoughts? That causes a big problem for this plan. He's listening. Not super surprising. But why bring them here now? For this discussion. Boy, Aaron. Aaron! <laughs> there it is. Speaking of legacy. These two are in a different line of life, thought. It's 
It's a little confusing because he doesn't have any freedom. Maybe his leaving them with freedom is him exercising control in the only way he knows how. Maybe they're right. This would make me really nervous if I was them. The fact that he seems to be reading their minds, knows they're coming, told them his weakness, it still seems pretty confident in what he's about to achieve. I mean, either it's the best news possible, which is that he's trying to get them to stop him, or the worst news that he's just way more ahead of them than they thought. <laughs> Killing Aaron is not the highest victory. The highest victory is saving him. That is a, a lot of faith. That is an astounding amount of faith. I would worry about that later. There's still a role for Annie to play. wonder what it is. It's a huge burden to bear. But I think it's important to keep perspective that things get away from you sometimes. And the world is so unbelievably complicated that even actions you make with the best of intentions can trigger things that just are way out of your expectation and do a lot of harm. But that's partly why I think the focus should be on doing what you feel is right at all times, because that's going to happen one way or the other. If you do the thing you feel is right, you know, you make the best choice that's in front of you and things go wrong. Well, at least you did what you felt was right. At least you have that. You know, you have something inside of yourself. If you try to do what you feel will lead to the best result that feels wrong, well, there's no guarantee that you're going to get the result you want. And also you factor in all of time, high likelihood that it's connected in some parts of future tragedy. So then you have nothing. You know, you, you've caused tragedy and you have nothing in yourself. No strength, no conviction, no character, no beliefs. It's not too late. Here's the role they're playing. I'm not following their logic though. Yeah, that's weird. What What is that about? What? <laughs> How does that connect to the female titan? Maybe she can eat part of Falco to gain some of the beast titan's abilities, which includes flying? That's what Aaron's afraid of. Even at a time like this, all things to be worried about right now. I guess it runs real deep. And they got a good view, maybe to see the final battle. There's no other target, there's no other priority. Godspeed to these NPC blimps. <laughs> this guy gets it at least. You know what this reminds me of? What it makes me think of? Pix has talked about this way back when, like in episode one or whatever, three. This was Pix's theory that it was a, a common enemy of humanity that was needed to bring humanity together. Well, here you go. You you got it. I mean, that was a conversation with Aaron, so I wonder if he's had that thought. <laughs> This is not going to work, but at least they found something, found some answers. I mean, anything helps. I mean, any, any damage for when the crew shows up. A lot of people playing their part in some small way. Yeah, forget the Colossal Titan. It's all about Eren. Manifest Zeke. What, energy baseball? When will the baseball destruction end? When? How many seasons of Zeke just tearing things up? I guess when Levi shows up. You tried. We learned something along the way. 
this this guy <laughs> Zeke. I know I talk a big game about higher ideals like that. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any death as satisfying to me as Levi killing Zeke for what he's done, especially to Erwin. One more hope. One more flying vehicle. I think it's time to make a crash landing on Aaron. He's big enough. Oh, this might be happening sooner than I thought. Please happen this episode. <laughs> I can't wait again. Zeke won't stop Aaron though, I don't think. Doesn't even seem like he's in control. It seems like he's just like Aaron's tool. Here we go. Can you imagine? Skydiving onto th onto this thing with Zeke baseballing at you. Oh my god, get him! Oh, I'm so on edge. <laughs> Hell yeah. I almost forgot about their Titan powers for a second. Where is Zeke's consciousness in all this? I don't think I've ever seen a cooler battleground than this. <laughs> Fighting on Eren. Last hope. The last hope. We got an audience for the final battle. That's my question. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Thank you, Armin. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Oof. Cliffhanger of all cliffhangers. I'm legit sweating. What is this? Oh yeah, I couldn't think of it. There was no opening. I was looking forward to that. It's okay. There's been some great ones already. At least we get an ending song. Birds. It's the birds all along. I knew it. I couldn't think of it. There's that bizarre shot of a seagull with Armin. Maybe don't go under the tree. That caused a lot of issues. It's almost like the, the forbidden fruit in a way. She went into the tree, met the, whatever that thing was, the weird skeleton fish, worm, parasite, and that gave her will, but also sin. Sin that humanity is still struggling to reconcile. Maybe that's the fight. Using will and higher thinking to fight the evils of humanity. So now it's a wait for final, final, final season part two. But I'm beyond thrilled with these two episodes, I guess you'd call them. Highlight for me, definitely Hanji's sacrifice. It activated something in my heart that has been in there ever since I saw Erwin's final charge. And it's one of my favorite things about the show. And I think in many ways is the antidote. You know, I thought at times that Erwin actually was the, in a sense, the conclusion. You know, I think maybe the author gave us the answer way back when couple seasons ago. Sacrificing your selfish desires and your fear and your trauma to make the highest choice you can make. And in that light, I think it's no accident that all of these people, Hanji, but also Erwin and the whole crew to some extent, are following that legacy. I mean, it's Erwin that I think was the, the backbone of this resistance. I mean, that's been his spirit from the beginning. I know I'm an Erwin fanboy, so that's just one way to look at it, but I was profoundly moved by by the Hanji scene. And it was done so well, I didn't even need that Obi-Wan Kenobi cameo from, from Irwin because it was so present in that scene. It was just coming out of every pore. Also very notable and intriguing is what is going on with Eren? I mean, a couple questions emerged for me in this episode from him. One is the question raised by the group about maybe Eren wants us to stop him. The question of does he just not feel free and so he's leaving them with the task of doing what he secretly wants. But also the question of whether or not there isn't something to this that is about uniting humanity. I mean, you imagine there'd be a better way to do it, but it's working. It worked. It's possible that if they survive, this is the end of the, the Eldian conflict, and the Eldians might even get to live and have kids. You know, I guess in a sense, I'm glad this is part one, because I've taken some comfort in knowing that there's always more Attack on Titan to come. Now we have one, one last big one. If the show is to be believed, you never know. There are still a lot of questions to be answered, like what happened to Connie's mom, etc. Hopefully that will be cleared up in Attack on Titan, the final, 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 final season.